So let's start now from the definitions. What is sensor fusion? I provided here on the slide a um, definition provide, uh, given by Wikipedia. But I think that the better definition is the one provided by the JDL, which can be thought as a kind of standardization algorithm from sensor fusion. So sensor fusion can be defined as an example of techniques that combine data from multiple sensors to achieve improved accuracy and more specific inference that could be achieved by the use of a single sensor. In this slide, on the <clears throat> top picture, you can see a schematization of this definition. So we have different stream of sensor data coming from the sensor. And um, we, uh, in the center here, we have what we call fusion engine or fusion processor that fuse all this data to provide us an output uh, that can be used uh, by a system. If we think our brain is a sensor fusion engine because the five sense are our sensor that provide different stream of data and our brain merge all this information to give us, to provide us a um, assessment, a good, although not perfect assessment of the reality. So the question, why we need sensor fusion? The simple answer is try to blind yourself and you will understand why. Basically, the point here is that a single stream of data are not sufficient for having a good and reliable assessment of the external world. Um, more specifically, the reason why we need sensor fusion can be grouped in four main categories according to the GDL. Um, the first one is sensor deprivation. Simply, if we are trying to measure an object, one of the sensors can break, and so we don't want uh, to lose the perception of the object if this happens. The other one is limited spatial coverage. So one sensor can cover spatially just a given region of an object. In the third point in precision is basically everything related to all, uh, the error given by the sensor. So it can be in this category, it can be included the noise sensor, the systematic error, and everything which is related to the fact that our instrument, our sensor is imperfect. Uncertainty is, is a bit different because sometimes the sensor cannot measure all relevant attributes of the percept of, of the object. So it's a limitation which depends on the object we want to observe. And we will see that this uh, is particularly true in, in the he health domain. Uh, for example, if we want to measure the status of a person, and of course, this status uh, cannot be uh, percept and measured by a single sensor. Let's now try to give an example. So let's imagine that our goal is to estimate the parameter g, the constant of gravity. What we can do, of course, is putting an accelerometer in a static context, such as, I mean, laid on a table. We can expect that the measurement of the accelerometer would be a nine, a constant 9.81 size. The force of gravity is the only force the accelerometer is, is um, affected. Uh, actually, in uh, what we measure in reality is this kind of jagged line due to the noise of the uh, accelerometer. One possibility that we have to cope with this noise is putting uh, simply another accelerometer, which has its own noise, and, aver and in each time stamp averaging the, um, the measurement done. So on the assumption that the two noises are uncorrelated, we can show that with four sensors, four accelerometer, namely, the impact of the noise is halved. So here we have a really intuitive and simple example of a sensor fusion algorithm, which is actually just the average, on a simple task such as the estimation of a constant. Uh, let's now try to give a more practical um, outlook. So what is the main application in, of sensor fusion in our technology? Um, sensor fusion uh, was born in the 60s and specifically uh, most of the application, even nowadays, are in what we call the navigation system or motion uh, movement tracking system. Specific, uh, a really good example of this is the self-driving car. Self-driving car, in order to have a correct and reliable estimation of the velocity and uh, the position, um, uh, use a different uh, set of sensors, such as laser sensor, GPS, video camera, radar sensor, 
and fuse all the stream of data to have an accurate estimation of the position of the car in the world or, for example, the position of another object external to the car, an obstacle, for example. Robotic motion and control are another great example of application of sensor fusion. Uh, specifically, uh, most of the robots that are able to move indoor, so in a closed space, use, for example, what is called a particle filter, which is a particular sensor fusion al algorithm, to orientate themselves in, in, um, in a closed space. Of course, the last one, but last but not the least, is he health and telemedicine. I mean, in he health we have many sensors, such as nature sensor, ECG sensor, and I mean, many type of sensor, yeah. and can use all the sensors to have a good estimation of what is the health status of a person. So this is what we, we will discuss today. And as we will see, sensor fusion is a key enabler for what we call the e-health paradigm. So of, of the realization of a true e-health system, which will be able to provide a great help to the future of the medicine and the health monitoring in general. But, okay, now we've seen the application, we've seen some example. Let's try now, try now to get to the theory. So what are the objects of the sensor fusion? What are the main entities we will discuss later? We can just think three main objects according to the GDL. So we have signal, feature, and decision. So the signal, as we, we can see, are the raw data produced by the sensor and are actually what we, we take out of the sensor. Feature can be seen as processed and higher level version of this, of this signal, while decision actually are a more and an higher um, abstraction level and feature and correspond basically to the output of a classifier. But let's now try to give an example, self-driving car. So here on the slide, we have depicted a kind of approximation of how a um, tracking system of a self-driving car can work. As promise, I mean, the real world system doesn't work like this, but this, I mean, I've chosen this scheme to provide us some good insight for uh, the explanation of the, um, the distinction between signal features and decision. So on the system one, we have a, a first tracking system which use accelerometer, so time series data produced by uh, inertia units, such as accelerometer and gyroscopes, and images. So what we can do actually is operate on, on this level, this, of the signal level, a first sensor fusion to have an estimation of velocity and position of the car. And so we pass here from signal video and acceleration to feature, velocity and position. What we can do actually is using another sensor, namely GPS, which provide us a feature, namely the position. I will not give any details here of how the GPS works. This is not the scope of this lecture. So we can use um, uh, the position given by the GPS fused with what we got before and have a new estimation of the velocity and position, which, which hopefully is more accurate of the previous one. At this point, we can use the video camera to sound the external environment of the self-driving car and, for example, detect the presence and the distance of an obstacle. At this point, with an inner logic, we can say, okay, this is a dangerous situation or is not a dangerous situation. So exactly this choice is what in the sensor fusion is called decision. So as we can see, a decision can be always represented as an output of a classifier. I depicted here on the slide a system two working with a completely different type of sensor, namely a LiDAR in this case, uh, which is then coupled with the GPS to compute the same output as in the system one. The output of this two system can be, at this point, fused another time in in with what we call decision fusion to have a kind of fused decision. So this, as I said, is a didactical example, but it's really useful for us to distinct all these kind of entities which will be used in the next lectures.